Hi everyone and you're very welcome to the Three Off The Tea podcast brought to you live today from Carlow Golf Club. Ian, you're very welcome up the road to Carlow. Great to be here, Harry, great to be here, yeah. Um, Bit of a love. change from me going down the road all the time to Tremorey, but uh, yeah, look. Yeah, we got the sunny southeast. True. It's not Coming bad out the out sun, Tremorey, so that's, I mean, surely you, you love that. Absolutely. Tell me a bit about... Um, Carlo, you would have played it a good bit, I'm sure, in your amateur days, or maybe even in... Yeah, in both form. amateur and professional, yeah. I uh, love the first 15 holes here, absolutely love it, and I despise the last three. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of pain. Just just coming in the gates there, I could feel it again, it was coming back, so yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. want, will, will we go there, and, and what's specific? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that? it was 649, six, 649, four 400 power starting on, on uh, 16 and 649, yeah. Wow. And uh, you might remember, like... Um, like the interview we had with Parig there last week, and he was saying there'd, there'd be one hole the night before that would keep him up the 16th, of August, and it's the top top of the list. Even and, though you made nine on the last, it's the yeah, six yeah, the it's, it's the six on the 16th because so that, that started that started, that, that started the rot, started it? The rot, yeah. And do you want to go through it shot by shot? Yeah, or we particularly just no, oh, Harry, no, no, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to forget yeah. about but it. But you would still recognise it as being a good track, but it's just, oh, in it's your class. mind, it's a, a 15-hole yeah, like, good yeah, track. Yeah, no, it's class, great track. Actually. And, and it's always been known all over Ireland as a great track, yeah, you know. in fairness, yeah, yeah. it has. Look, I'm very lucky that this is my home club where I play a lot of my golf. And uh, no, you're right, it's playable all year round and it's a, it's a great course. We're coming into a, a great time of year as well, Ian. We're only four weeks away from the Masters. We can see activity here this morning. People are starting to get to clubs back out after a very mm. harsh January and February really weather wise but uh, four weeks to go to the first major it's an exciting time of year isn't it? It is it's exciting really with this new system that we have in terms of the major setup um, in terms of the dates times and that and you know it, it is last July since uh, our own mm. Shane Larry won there in uh, out in Port Rush so you know what is it, eight nine months that we have to wait and uh, yeah we have obviously with the players championship and then we have the four majors uh, um, month after month, so um, yeah, for a golfer, for a spectator, um, this is the time of the year that you're you're getting excited. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's been some good tournaments since the turn of the year, and some of the top guys are are in good form. Rory and Ram and Tommy Fleetwood was close enough last week, so they're all out there now, and they're warming up nicely for these big early season events. And, yeah. and Bay Hill this week, the players next week, and and as we said, the Masters upcoming. So, who are you keeping an eye on? Or, or Let's go straight to the Masters. Might as well go straight into it, yeah, because exactly. we'll preview the majors here and see uh, see where we go with it. Well, shoot, who are you, who are you thinking? Who are you fancying for the Masters? Um, I, have th I have three guys. I have, um, obviously, I have John Ram. I mean, he won there in Spain at the end of last year, then won the DP World Championship. And then if we went to the, the kind of the calendar year of 2020, 10th in the Hawaii, 2nd in the Farmers, 9th in Phoenix, 17th in Genesis, 3rd in Mexico a couple of weeks ago. So a guy on form just hasn't got that kind of win this year, calendar year if you want, um, uh, especially on the, on the PGA Tour, but I'm looking at him. I'm looking at Patrick Reed as well, 9th in the world, you know, love him or hate Controversial him. picking, yeah. controversial. Controversial, yeah, but I, I think that's why... I mean, are, you might remember this, and I'm going to bring this back up as well. Three, when, did, when did Patrick win the Masters? Two, three years ago? Eight, uh, 18. 18, so two, two years ago. Uh, you might remember we were doing 18. a show down at WLR. You were in Augusta yeah, at the well. time, and I was there, and we came to the final round. I think Rory and Ram, or sorry, Rory and Reed were playing together. Well, we all yeah. know who I'd go for, anyhow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you, and I said Reed. I said Reed will win this hands down. So, yeah, I, I was delighted. I think I, I sent you a text there on the Monday morning just to let yes, you know. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Well, I'll tell you, his win recently, um, he obviously shows that he either um, blocks out a lot of noise or has a very thick skin. But uh, for a guy that was involved in so much controversy to go out and win there as he did mm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's amazing that he can just... Switch that, off that's all that and that's why like he's going back to the uh, to Augusta, a place where obviously he's had great success. He was in mm. college there as well. Um, but as he said, like if it, love him or hate him, if he's mm. going to get a couple of roars from the crowd in terms of support or the other way, mm. um, he just takes it as boat and uses his energy. Mm. So I mean, this fella's I no, think he's primed, no he's primed a world, for the majors. He's a world class player. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Um, I think look. 
the, the golfing public is very split and divided, probably not even split. A lot of mm. them don't like that because I think that five-letter word of cheat in, in golf is a really bad word. But uh, yeah. we can't deny his ability on the golf course. You'd just like no. to see him show a little bit of remorse and, and maybe start to change oh, his, yeah. his ways or his habits. But okay, yeah, for give pure you golfing reasons yeah, no, you know, and everything I'll, outside it, you, 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 can't, you can't dismiss him. No, that he, he's, certain, no. he's certainly a challenger. Okay. But um, I'm, I'm going to go with Tiger. I think Tiger is mm. going to win it again this year. Um, dare I say, is more realistic chance of winning this year, um, just because it's the start of the year. He hasn't played much. He has had back surgeries. We all know about that. But I think over the course of a season, wear and tear, he's not getting any younger. And if we look through the, the going to the Open Championship, colder weather, not mm. going to be great for a back. I think if he gets the next couple of weeks in some sort of decent form. Um, yeah, it's a place he's won five times, obviously the defending champion, and yeah, I have Tiger Woods as going to win it. Yeah, look, there's no doubt the course absolutely suits him. We kind of saw that really in the, in the President's Cup, uh, how much he excelled on a golf course that's kind of made for Tiger and yeah. the skill set that he has down in Royal Melbourne. So yeah. I can't disagree with you with that. Do you want my tree? Uh, well, that's what's going to go very So no Brooksy, no Brooksy in your tree, anyhow? No. no. You're no. giving Brooksy a rest for the moment? Yeah, I, for most of the year, actually, I think. Oh. Well, in right. terms of the majors, yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, i lead out. Um, yeah, a lot of people are going to probably think now, you know, I'm going to mention Rory straight away, but Rory actually isn't in my tree for the Masters because I think, again, the pressure of the build-up mm. and the Masters, the Masters, Grand the Masters Slam. for Rory. Yeah. I think it's just too much. He's yeah. never performed well in the first round. Um, then at the weekend, he has kind of played catch-up a little bit, but mm. played catch-up really when he was out of contention. Yeah. Maybe if Rory gets off to a half-decent start in round one uh, of the Masters, he puts himself in some position. But I think but he's yet to, That's an awful lot of pressure. must be that's on the back of the If he doesn't get a decent first round He's away. yet to break level power in the, in the yeah. first round of the Masters in a while. So. Yeah, yeah. Xander Schauffele is my first guy that I'm going yeah. to go to. Obviously, look, he was very close there last year. Uh, he was second. Um, he was third in the US Open last year. He's played 11, 12 majors and he's made 10 cuts. He's very consistent. Even recently, he was 14th in Mexico at the back end of last year when Rory won that WGC in Shanghai. He was second to him there. He was second in uh, Hawaii at the start of the year in that um, Century Champions event. He's a guy I've been following for a while, and I just think, yeah, he's, he's had a couple of near misses in the majors, really. He kind of goes under the radar a little bit, oh, yeah. but um, he's a serious player, and I think, look, there's a lot of them, their next best thing is to win a, I think is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, really, and I, I, mean, I just think he's, he's going to come on the major scene at some mm. stage, and, and he's, he's one of my picks. Um, my second pick is Matt Fitzpatrick. Again, a guy who's been knocking on yeah. the door for a while. Um, you know, serious, serious golfer, serious putter. You know, he's been knocking around the kind of top echelons of golf for a while. Has yeah. a very good caddy on the bag. Seems like a really kind of solid guy, a solid head on a, on young shoulders. Ryder Cup as well from a couple of years back. Yeah, that's, that's right. So yeah, that's performed great experience, yeah. very well in the majors last year. He was 21st in the Masters, 40th in the PGA, 12th in the... US Open and 20th up in Portrush in mm. the Open. So, yeah, I'm going to put him out there as a guy that could contend in the Masters. Um, also, he had some big, uh, he didn't win, he won one tournament last year in the middle of the season in America. Um, but apart from that, he was second in Bay Hill last year, second in the Rolex tournament in Italy, and he was ninth in the season ending tournament in Dubai. And then he comes out at the start of this season and was second in Abu Dhabi. So, look, I'm going to throw him out there as a guy that's potentially um, going to do well in Augusta, uh, Matt Fitzpatrick. Oh, who's going to win, though? Who's going to win? I'm torn between two guys, and one of them is completely left field. The other one is slightly oh, I know obvious. Gonna, I know you're going to go. Do you? Yeah, I do. And yeah. I'm going to go with him. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're still yeah, I am. Yeah. He's previous form around there. Um, a lot of people will think this guy has had a nosedive down the world rankings. He has. Has a serious issue getting yeah. the ball in play off the tee box, but can still put like an absolute dream. Mm. And, and if he can get the ball in play at all around Augusta, and he can put the way he does, he will contend. Uh, Jordan Speed for me yeah. to have a chance. Yeah. Um, Love to see him back. Look, he's had amazing history in Augusta when you think about it winning there and, and equally blowing up a few years later. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's very easy to go in and look at the stats at the moment and where his issues are. And he's only hitting 47% of fairways at the moment, and that's ranked 224th in the ranking. So it's very obvious that he's hitting it sideways off the tee. Mm. And, and look, to a certain extent, 
you might get away with it a little bit more around Augusta hitting it sideways because it's not that penal off the tee or, or there was no rough anyway to make yeah, but, it penal. But your there approach shots and, then, that's, that's yeah, where it is, isn't absolutely. it? Now, look, I'm, I'm taking a bit of a wing and a chance that maybe he sorts himself out or is at the moment and sorts himself out over the, over the next few weeks. But, yeah, I just kind of think he's a, he is a major player. He hasn't gone away. I don't see Jordan Speed not winning another major. And, uh, yeah, it is a big call, but uh, he's going to be my third for the Masters. Excellent. Okay. Lovely stuff. Move on to the PGA Championship. So we're back to Harding Park. Uh, first time, I think, since 2015 when Rory won the uh, WGC um, Championship there. It also had the WGC, I think, Amex back in 2005 over in San Francisco. A golf course, I think that was a um, car park actually for the Olympic Club, which is right beside it, in, in 98. So it, it's had a real turn of fortune. Uh, as we spoke with Pauline Harrington there a couple of weeks back um, in an interview, he loves playing there. He actually plays there quite a mm. bit. So, um, yeah, a great style of golf course. Um, and again, looking at three guys, I'm looking at uh, Danny Willett. Danny was 33rd in the world, obviously previous Masters champion, won the, the BMW Championship back there in Wentworth uh, last year. Um, you know, he had a good run in the match play when it was there in 2015 as well. So a guy that kind of lost it a little bit, but winning the DP Tour Championship, I think, in 2018. And then obviously, um, you know, the, the flagship event in the BMW Championship. I think this guy is, um, he's, he's obviously a major player. So looking at him, um, another guy I'm looking at who I really, really fancy to be, have a, a massive, massive year. And he already he had a huge year last year, but has gone way under the radar is uh, Colin Morikawa. You know, he won the Barracuda Championship last year, right. which was staged at the same time as the Open Championship. He's world number 52. He won in his eighth start last year. I mean, he just graduated from college and uh, two months previous and then won uh, at the Barracuda. Uh, he was at that time, I think, 65 in the world, 1.7 million in nine events. Mm. And this is, this is a stat. Now, I, I went on to the Amiga World Rankings last year just to go through his, his results. He's played 21 events. Um, last year. Right. Okay, 21 events, 20 as a pro, played actually in the Arnold Palmer as an amateur. Yes. He hasn't missed a cut yet. Yeah, wow. Hasn't yeah. missed a cut yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I looked up there, he's obviously we're in um, Bay Hill this week, he's two under par, nicely sorted there. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at him, but if we're going for a winner, it's uh, Rory. Rory, I think Rory's going to take this place apart. I, and I do actually I've think... I've converted you eventually. Yeah, I no, Rory's going to get back I, to I, I just think, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we'll get the Masters out of the way. Obviously, I'd love to see him win it, but I think we'll get that out of the way. And then uh, I think he's full steam ahead in terms of, um, yeah, it's, that's, that's where he's going to get to win his uh, third PJ Championship. Is there still a bit of a fear? And I'm, I'm talking about, OK, he won that HSBC back in November in Shanghai. But in his tournaments since then, Dubai being one case in point where he had a chance to win and John Rand did him on the last day. Mm. Equally, he's had a couple of chances now on the West Coast swing there. Is he becoming very consistent at, at finishing in the top five and the top ten, but again losing that kind of killer instinct? Now, this is harsh, and again, it's, it's harsh because it's off his own very high standards. He did win four tournaments last year, and in fairness, they were all big tournaments while they weren't majors. But... He seems to be unbelievably consistent in his game, but you would nearly argue that when he won his majors, he was a bit of a yo-yo insofar as he had flashes of brilliance and then, yes, missed cuts. Now what he has is an unbelievable level of consistency, but I nearly see the flashes of brilliance being less brilliant, and I think possibly his ability to kind of close things out on a Sunday, he is yeah, still like, lacking yeah. in. Now, that's, no, look, that's coming across as harsh. I know, I know, but, but the, the, obviously there is a number of ways that you can look at these mm. things. Um, would you be, rather be a yo-yo or would yeah. you rather be in consistency? I, I think you'd have to take consistency because it means you're, 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 well, in, look, you're in the mix. One. That's, that's you're in the mix. He, you know, and, yeah. and like any top player, Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus would always say, like, as long as they had a chance on the last day yes. to win. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you're mm. pitching up there on a Saturday morning and a Sunday afternoon, mm. with, look, a great score will get me to the top 10. Yeah. There's no excitement in that. And it's certainly not going to do. Um, I think this is going to be Rory's best year mm. by a mile, yeah. Well, look, he's still, mm. he's still young enough. There's no doubt he's improved the, the departments of his game oh, that yeah. he needed to. I think the X factor now is to tee it up on a Sunday in contention yeah. and go out and shoot 66 and win the thing. Yeah, I th and I think he will. That's I think he will this year, no matter who he's up against. He knows how to win these things, you know, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And you, anyway, where are we going? Um, I think where we're going to go with first is the other guy who I was considering for the Masters, but I'm going to slip him into this one instead. Patrick Cantlay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, another guy that very much goes under the radar. He was fourth in Hawaii at the start of the year. He was 11th then in Pebble Beach, and he was 17th at the Genesis in Riviera. Uh, he won the Memorial last year. Again, a lot of people probably... Don't even remember that or, yeah. or put that down up Goes to his the radar, name. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. he does. And he, he lost a playoff then against Kevin Na for the Shriners um, last right, year yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So, But again, I'm looking at guys who can perform on the biggest stage in these majors. And I had a serious you, chance last year. That's unbelievable. Right. Yeah, 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 I had yeah, an unbelievable remember, chance, yeah. you know. So um, you look at the Masters last year, he was ninth. He was third. Then in the next major was the, the US PGA, 21st in the US Open and 41st in the... Uh, open Championship. So, you know, he's definitely a guy that has consistent form and uh, yeah, I'm going to stick him out there as one possibility. And mm. um, the next guy, obviously last week and, and got a bit of stick from Paul Azinger as we know and, and which you can might have a view on that as to whether that was out of order, but Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy, we all agree, yeah, needs to move it on and, and be the next level, be it winning in America or winning a major, but he's an unbelievably consistent guy. He's now number 10 in the world. Uh, still only what 29 years of age yeah. you know so this guy has serious game mm. and I think he's going to keep putting himself in position and he's, he's going to click one eventually so yeah. uh, I'm going to put Tommy Fleetwood down as, as an, uh, another pick for that um, and after that I don't know I'm thinking maybe GMAC um, GMAC like to come back and, and win as he did in Saudi Arabia He's back now. He's hanging around the 50th in the world there. He mm. needs to stay there, obviously, over the next few weeks to make sure he gets his ticket yeah. for Augusta. But, yeah, um, yeah I'm going to put GMAC out as, as a guy who maybe his game is starting to come back for a yeah. part two of his career. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'd love to see it happen. He's, uh, he's an old-style kind of player as such. Yeah, he's not a bomber. Which he's, is the he's, attraction with him, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it is. It's absolutely. A, it's, You're it's drawn to it straight away because I think we've more, yeah. Yeah. we tend to have more in common with yeah. that. You know, yeah. we can see what he's trying to do yeah. with the golf The average ball golfer can identify him. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put him down for a good, big good year shirt, and, yeah, and, uh, yeah maybe, maybe that USPGA. Mm, very good. All right, very moving on to the third major of the year, the US Open. Um, back to the notorious wing foot scene That's of right, that so. uh, 2006, I suppose. Um, what would you call it? Disaster for Mickelson and Monty and yeah, and yeah. not so much Harrington, but Padre. Padre was in there as well with a chance to win. So going back to uh, that, that that lovely place, I, I have three people. So yeah, three yeah, people. Three back, yeah, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to try and Brooks. Brooks Kopka. I haven't spoken about him yet. Um, clearly, the man on form in terms of major championships, I suppose. Um, I'll be, be okay. We haven't had him once since last July, but yeah, that little injury on his leg. I'm just wondering how that's going to affect him at the moment so far. We're in March. Um, it, I mean, his form hasn't been that great. No, but hasn't. then again, mm. you know, he could rock up at the Masters and win him by three or four shots, you know. So I'm going to throw him in there. I'm also going to throw in our own Shane Lowry. I think Shane is going to get back into um, the major championship setup as well in, in terms of challenging. Um, you know, it, it's going to be up there in, uh, is in New Jersey or New Hampshire, I think, which is, mm. you know, it's a large Irish following as well. So, um, you know, a large amount of expats in there. So I think that'll, that'll only help him as well. And uh, really, I, I'm going for Patrick Reed again. I'm going to think he's going to win the US Open. Um, look, two of his three wins on tour have come in New York. You know, the Barclays in 2018, the Northern right. Trust in 2019. I think that kind of New York attitude, I think, um, in terms of the fans, will, will, will help him, even if mm. they're going to be boisterous, even if they're going to be negative towards him, even if they're going to be positive towards him. Mm. He seems to feed on both. And I mean, sure, that's a winning combination. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I look, I mean, I, I, the US Open is my favourite tournament. It always has been, I think, when we go back through the years, the, the first kind of tournaments I always remember it was, it, unfortunately, it wasn't the, the Masters or, mm. or the Open Championship. It was, and maybe because it was an iconic ca uh, character in Payne Stewart, yes, uh, winning yeah. at 91, I think, in a, in a playoff with Scott Simpson, right. and wearing the, the Stars and Stripes and the Knickerbockers gear. Mm. I thought it was just, it was, that really mm. just got me to the golf and I wanted to be like him. So that's why I have such a, a, such a strong relationship with the US Open and my favourite tournament of the year. And, 
Yeah, she might as well go for that controversial character, Patrick Reed. Mm. What do you think of the US Open, the way it's kind of changed over the years? It, it, it used to be more of a brutal test. Mm. Like it, like that year you were saying the last time was in winged foot, I think mm. it was five over par that won it. So, mm. But I think they've softened it up a bit now because it wasn't so. sort of, well, it was the famous year, was it three or four years ago where they lost the greens? I can't remember which course it was at, mm. but and there, was a lot Bay, of, think, there was a lot of stick mm. over over that and, and we all know look there's the always US, been stick i think with the us open yeah every year another has they, yeah. they they try to kind of um try to control the scoring yeah. such a way to try and keep it as close to level par but i think in the last two or three years and with mm. record score win the us mm. open i think in 2018 maybe mm. you know so yeah well, that's true yeah they've yeah. softened Aaron, it to yeah, a certain yeah, extent yeah, yeah. i think you know i think people like to see pros struggle a little bit yeah. yeah we love to see them shooting birdies but we see enough of that all year round yeah. we, we kind of like to see well if you look at shinnecock two years ago yeah. uh, and the, uh, one of my favorite um venues for us open um and they kind of lost the greens badly there do you remember yeah, they were was putting, that, that was putting the one out, that was yeah. mickelson was that's right he went over and back, and back yeah, yeah yeah it was it was it was getting mm. into crazy territory mm. there i suppose yeah. Yeah, yeah but um yeah yeah it, it is i mean if we look back traditionally or historically through uh championships that have been at wing foot like i mean plus five plus six plus seven yeah. uh, is the winning score interesting to see what will it, it, it will be this year i'm yeah. sure they'll want to keep it i'm sure wing foot will have a, an interest in saying look we we, we like being the beast in terms yeah. of the u.s open venue yes. so yeah. i can see um i can see them having a lot to play a, a huge part in as well you know yeah okay and where well, are you going harry um, top three picks now right well i'm going with justin thomas is is one guy that i'd consider for it definitely um you know Oh, geez, yeah, I haven't spoken about him yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's had an unbelievable record yeah. recently. He wins, he wins nearly, nearly every third or fourth tournament. Right, yeah. Three wins, in, in I think, the last. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Justin Thomas, for me, I think he'll definitely contend in the, in the US Open. Um, another guy, um, South African, Eric Van Ryan. Mm. Yeah. A guy that's uh, not out on tour that long, but is seriously moving in the right direction. Uh, all the stats here for him. He's up to 42nd in the world. Um, even in Mexico there a couple of weeks ago, so he finished tied third. Yeah. Out in Abu Dhabi, I think he was 12th. Um, he's only had one win on tour. He won that Scandinavian Masters last year, yeah. and he lost in a playoff. You remember that playoff in Turkey where they played under the mm -hmm. lights? Um, yeah. Was it Tommy who won that one, I think, didn't he? Or, no, no, no uh, um, Tyrrell. Tyrrell, sorry, Tyrrell happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct, um, in that tournament in Turkey. So, And again, like I said, we saw him a couple of weeks ago. I'm not a big fan of the trousers, I have to say, these uh, ankle <laughs> kickers, but um, <laughs> we'll forgive him the fashion. Ah, you're old style. Old style. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Never, I'll never Pen go with papers the papers yeah, yeah, We've got to drag you into the news. Yeah, 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 yeah. But last year in the majors, he, complete, he competed quite well. He finished eighth in the PGA, 43rd in the US Open, and 20th in the Open in Port Rush. So definitely a guy that seems to be kind of moving into the top. Uh, echelons of the golf world rankings up to 42nd in the world now and moving in the right direction so we're going to go with him as a, as a second pick and then my third and probably most dominant pick for this US Open is going to be John Ram. I won't repeat all the reasons that you did earlier but Look, John Ram is a serious, serious golfer. Um, the next level for him, he's won on both tours now. I think he's three wins in Europe and, and three in America. So, um, you, next, you like the new t-shirts that he's wearing? Uh, yeah, don't know, do I really? But uh, look, we like I said, we'll have to get over. I'll have to get over the whole fashion <laughs> thing. But um, yeah, his his golf Turn game. Turn coming back, Harry? Yeah, maybe. I don't. I don't know. Will they be I allowed? Love them now. Remember, we Charlie Golf Club will allow them. But I don't know. Will uh, will anywhere else? Um, Let's see, John Ram, I'm going to put him down for the US Open. Brilliant, right. We're off to the Open Championship then, aren't we? Royal St. George's, I think, seen of Darren, wasn't it? Yes, nine, 2011. Nine years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, Just nine years ago time, now, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so look, I'll go straight into my three. Xander Shoffley, for all the reasons you've uh, explained earlier on, uh, major, major player. Um, I have, as you just said there a minute ago for the U US Open, I have Justin Thomas. So mm -hmm. he's the, my first, uh, or sorry, he's entry into it. In terms of the major championships this year, I think Mexico will hurt a little bit last week, but yeah. he, I mean, three wins for everything that you've said. And um, again, another player that you mentioned is Tommy Fleetwood. I'm going to go with Tommy. I think, uh, yeah, he's going to break through the hurt from last year uh, with Shane Lowry. I think we'll just throw him on a little bit. And uh, people can talk about choking and everything like at the, at the Honda Classic. Mm. I don't see it that way at all. I, I thought, I, I saw it as a guy that, you know, money at this, time in his life 
doesn't really matter. It's now yeah. about wins. It's about championships. Mm. It's about going at it. And he went for it. Mm. And he went for it. He had to birdie the hole and he went for it. And yeah. okay, it didn't come off. But, mm. you know, Tommy Fleetwood is a guy that usually when he goes for a shot, it does come off. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think that the Open Championship this year will, will be his, uh, his, his, his first uh, major championship. Okay, very good. And um, yourself, Harry? My three, I'm going to go with Lee Westwood, believe it or not. Um, oh, lovely. Yeah, uh, that, well, I, that would be great. It would be great. And, and yeah. uh, I tell you, I just... Serious form as well. the, Yeah, not mm. even just his form and winning in Abu Dhabi was impressive. But I, for the last two years, he's kind of really come back into mm. form again. I don't know, is he a new hunger for it or whatever? And I know he's very settled in regards he has his he's new partner now caddy and firm mm. and stuff like that he just seems to be so relaxed and yeah, yeah yeah and you often find kind of that i think up. maybe once maybe he feels that uh, his best Lee years are behind him yeah. it, you end up having a bit of a bounce or a resurgence mm. but uh yeah i'm gonna go with lee westwood to contend well, nice. in, in the open um my second pick is going to be ricky fowler again ricky. yeah mm. uh he's performed well in the actually, open but previously. For another one yeah I, look, I, I, I took him out again he's a young guy people nearly feel oh god will Ricky ever win a major and he hasn't kind of ever really done it on the big stage enough even in in PGA Tour events mm. really but I'm going to give him a chance at a at an open uh, he's performed very well at opens before he can yeah. like you know all, we know all the things that you need in an open to control your ball flight and and, and to enjoy the challenge that is Lynx yeah. and, and he's unusual in a way um, for an American, he really seems to enjoy that challenge yeah. and, the, and the different... Some of his best finishes in major championships too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So he's my second pick. And my last one for the Open next year down in Royal St. George's is Tony Finau. Um, yeah. Again, a kind of guy who's popped up on the major scene. Different majors, seems to have a big game. Again, goes a little bit under the radar, but I'm going to throw him in there in the hope that he gets into position and contends. It's too easy to start looking at. Brooks and Adam Scott and Dustin Johnson and these guys, but yeah, uh, we haven't mentioned them at all. No, the these are some majors. of the names that we haven't yeah, mentioned. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so um, no, I'm going to go with Tony for now as being my last pick for next year's um, Open Championship. Excellent, right? Right, we'll do a quick fire. Suppose through this, we're going to do our Ryder Cup team. We're going to pick them: the European team and the US team. Right. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of similarities, but just to put them out of the way, so I'll have them locked here. What is it? It's Friday, the sixth of March. Well, I'm locked away. We'll, we'll come back to and it we'll then when the teams how, are picked and how see how wrong we got you on. Were. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Or how wrong you were. Right? Half of them picked themselves, obviously, anyway, at this stage. Go on, you follow uh, a European team. Right, OK. Well, I suppose, look, uh, Shane Lowry, one, Rory, uh, two, John Ram, three, Tommy Fleetwood, four. Um, where else am I going then? Uh, Justin Rose, five. Uh, do, do, do. Where else am I going? Uh, Danny Willett, six. You're putting in Danny? Good. Yeah, Good. putting in Danny. Um, and put in Lee Westwood, obviously, is seven. Uh, G-Mac? G-Mac, no. No. Okay. I think he's going to be a vice captain, all right. But okay. uh, uh, Tyrrell Hatton, I'm going to put in there, eight. Rafa Cabrera Bello. Yeah. I think he's going to so play cool. his way into yeah. it, maybe in nine. Um, not sure about this one, but hopefully you can find a bit of a resurgence of form this year. Uh, Francesco Molinari, he's really yeah, done very out. little in the last yeah, year. Last but night, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, but look, I'm going to stick him in there. Obviously, we all remember how well he got on with Tommy and played in, in so well in Paris. So, mm. uh, hopefully, he can kind of have a better season this year. I think did he win Bay Hill this time? This time Just last year, year. And, and, and pretty you much know, the Masters done was. Has done I'm, nothing I'm, after the no, Masters, you no, know. None of the top ten since the Masters. You know? Yeah. So um, I was reading a couple of physical issues as well um, as uh, technical things. So yeah, look, I mm. mean, when he's on his day, he's he's just class. class yeah, absolutely. Class. I'm going to put in a couple of rookies then. Matt Fitzpatrick, who I mentioned earlier, as regards a guy that could win a major. I'm going to put him in. I he's think played, I'm up to. He's played Harry. He's played before. He's not a rookie. Don't oh, he? sorry. I beg your pardon, Matt Fitzpatrick. He has, has he? He has. Yeah, I think, yeah. Right. Well, you know, I'm wrong, but I think he and has. My, I think he played and, in Darren Clark's team. I think. And my other one then, uh, I'll go with the rookie of the year from last year, um, Robert McIntyre. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Warm for connection there as well with his caddy. That's right, with his caddy, isn't it? Yeah, 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 from Fate Leg, yeah. So um, that's kind of where I am at there at the moment. Okay. Uh, look, again, I'm going to have a lot of similarities here. I'm going Rory. Uh, Rory McIlroy, John Ram, Tommy Fleetwood, Justin Rose, Shane Lowry, I've Danny Willett in there. Um, I've Bernd Wiesberger, 23rd in the world, won two Rolex Series events last year, the Italian and the Scottish, 
uh, Open and the Made in Denmark, so three tournaments last year. We hadn't seen him in, I think, 2018 a bit because he was injured, so I, I think he's a strong shout for, uh, to, to get a pick this year or to make it onto the team. Um, again, I have Matthew Fitzpatrick, war number 24, not the greatest start of the season. I have G Mac in, I, th I think he'll get there. Um, I have Victor Hovland as well, one in Puerto Rico uh, just a couple of weeks ago, 32nd in the Masters last year, 12th in the US Open. Um, you know, he tied and then broke the PGA Tour record for the most consecutive round in the 60s last year um, with, I think it was 19 rounds That's in right. the 60s, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, a serious, serious yeah. talent. I, I think he'll make his way. Um, yeah, I've Terrell Hatton, sixth in Mexico last week. Um, you know, he, he was first, I think, in, in Dubai in November and third in the, the Bay Hill last, last, week's, uh, last night, actually, I should say. Um, he hasn't played much again, the guy that's injured, but he's straight into good form as well. I've Lee Westwood. And uh, yeah, that's it. And we're looking at notable omissions, Stenson, Casey, Garcia, Rafa I have down, and uh, Matt Wallace. So yeah, there we go. So there are our teams locked. Yeah. It's going to jump team. onto the US tour there and see who's going to make it for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want to shoot or will I go? Go on, you fire away. Um, you fire away. Justin Thomas, obviously, Patrick Cantlay, um, Tiger Woods, Patrick Reed, Bryson, uh, Gary Woodland, uh, Brooks, DJ, obviously, as well, um, Xander Shoffley, Webb Simpson, uh, Tony Fanau, I think I'm up to about 10 there now, going to put in Speed because he's going to win the Masters, <laughs> so we'll have to put him in, and Matt Kuchar will be number 12 Kuch, for me, Kuch. yeah, so again, leaving out the likes of Ricky Fowler, Kevin Kisner, uh, Matthew Wolf, these guys, but uh, mm. yeah, they're my 12. Excellent, right. Um, a similar, very similar to you of Tiger Woods, Brooks, uh, DJ, Justin Thomas, Sanders Shoffley, Patrick Reed, uh, Gary Woodland, Bryson DeChambeau, uh, Patrick Cantlay, um, and then I have Tony Fino and Colin Morick. Kawa. Okay. I think that I think, yeah, obviously, because I think mm. he's going to have a great season, hasn't Mr. Costa, as I said earlier on. Um, yeah, I think that might be 12. Uh, sorry, Ricky Fowler is that. Uh, Ricky Fowler right, wins okay. So that's my 12 for the US team. So, how much are you putting on it? Actually, we'll have a fiver on it anyhow, won't we? Buy a, buy a cup of tea. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We look forward to it. Yeah, busy, yeah. busy schedule, majors, Olympics, Ryder Cup. It's a, a great season to look forward to. Yeah, great. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, um, look, I think we'll wrap it up there then. We've got the majors covered, um, obviously. Uh, we've done the Ryder Cup. Uh, great thank you to Carlo Golf Club here as well. And just yeah. looking down at um, European Tour winner Damien McGrain, pro shop here as well, one of Ireland's greatest golfers. Absolutely. You know, with a great record on the European Tour. So. Magnificent venue. He tiger down the stretch one day as well, didn't That's he? That's right. He Absolutely. tiger in Dubai, I think, third and fourth round, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, in Dubai. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, quality player and great to see him here, you know, P another PGA professional. Absolutely. So, and wishing every PGA professional out there a great season, season ahead. particularly Absolutely. with the dreadful, dreadful start yeah. that we've had. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks to everyone here. Um, yeah, and and uh, good luck with your tips for the, the year. Yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, must I also look forward to that our, coffee. Yeah. Yes, and <laughs> we must also thank our sponsor as well, Club Choice Ireland. Um, please visit our website at clubchoice.ie and they've been great to us to get in behind us for this podcast as well. Yeah. Right, folks, thank you very much and we'll talk to you soon.